Hi there, third graders. It's time to begin lesson 3-9. And with this lesson, we are going to be exploring multiplication squares. But first, our number talk. So we've got 37 plus 12 plus 18 plus 23. What can we do to get these larger numbers added together? The last couple of days we've been talking and working on making tens. When we have larger numbers, but we can combine some of the digits so that we can make a 10, it can help us add those numbers together a lot easier. So when I look at 37 plus 12 plus 18 plus 23, I want to focus on the numbers that are in the ones place. Well, I see a two and an eight. And I know that 2 plus 8 equals 10. So that means 12 plus 18 must equal 30 because 10 plus 10 is 20 plus this 10 that I made from adding 2 plus 8 is going to be 30. So, so far I have 30. Now I'm going to look at 37 and 23. Are there any numbers that I can combine to make a 10? There sure are. I can take the 7 and I can take the 3 because I know that 3 plus 7 is 10. So then I'm going to take my 3 in the 10th place, which is 30, add that to my 2 in the 10th place, which is 20. So 30 plus 20 is 50 plus this 10 I made that's going to be 60. So I'm going to add it down here to my 30 and I'm going to get 90. So that means that, hold on one second, I'm trying to get connected here. So that means that 37 plus 12 plus 23 is going to be 90. Good job. So we're going to start with some mental math and fluency. I want you to pause this video, go get your whiteboard marker and eraser, and then come back. Now that you're back, <coughs> I want you to think about this problem, but you can work it out, do what you need to do, when in doubt, draw it out on your whiteboard. You have two homework pages each day. How many homework pages do you have in a five-day week? Hmm. Go ahead and solve the problem on your whiteboard, and we're going to look at the solutions. Well, here's what I know. Remember, we're going to read the problem once. We're going to read it twice. Read it 500 times if you have to. You have two homework pages each day. How many homework pages do you have in a five-day week? So what do I know from the story? I know that I have two homework pages, and I need to figure out how many I'm going to have in a five-day school week. So I can use the number sentence 2 times 5 equals question mark. Now why that number sentence? Because this is telling me that I have two homework assignments for five days. And what's that answer going to be, ladies and gentlemen? It's going to be 10 homework pages because two times five equals 10 and homework pages because that's what we need to find out. That's our unit. And remember when you are solving story problems, you always need to have your unit written down. Here's another one. A cook places 10 grapes in each of seven fruit cups. How many grapes are there in all? Well, what do I know? A cook places 10 grapes in each of seven fruit cups. Now we know we also have our strategy of when in doubt, draw it out. So that means I could draw my 10 fruit cups I'm sorry, how about seven fruit cups, Mrs. Flurry? I'm going to put 10 grapes in each. Remember, we're going to use tally marks to make it be nice and neat and 
tidy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do that in every fruit cup. We have the seven fruit cups, and we're giving each fruit cup ten grapes. And then our task is to write a number sentence and find out how many grapes there are in all. Now, I don't want to do repeated addition. I know I could. I know I could because I know if I would do this in repeated addition and just keep adding 10 and count by 10s, that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. But my number model, I want it to be a multiplication one because I have... 10 grapes, and I'm putting 10 into each of the seven cups. So 10 grapes in seven cups is going to be 70 grapes. We need our unit, and let's take a peek and see what they say. And they also say 70 grapes. Last one, Kara has five stickers on each page of her journal. Her journal has eight pages in it. How many stickers does Kara have? Remember, we're gonna read the problem once, twice, 500 times until we know what we're being asked to do. So what do we know? Kara has five stickers on each page. This is an important word. It's not saying she just has five stickers. It's saying she has five stickers on each page of her journal. Her journal has eight pages in it. How many stickers does Kara have? So we need to find out how many stickers Kara has all together. Well, she has five stickers on eight pages. That's going to be our number sentence, our number model. We don't know the answer, so it's a question mark. Well, I can go ahead and draw eight pages. Right? There's four, five, six, seven, eight. Give each one five and five. Nice and neat and tidy. I'm going kind of quick now, so it's probably not my best work. Then let's go ahead. Five times eight. I've got five, eight groups of five. Okay? So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So my answer is going to be 40 stickers. All right, very good. Now, let's go to do some mental math. And you're going to need your whiteboard and marker yet. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw an array that has three rows of X's with three X's in each row and then write a number sentence that matches your array. Pause the video and do that and then come back. So does your array look something like this? Okay, I have an array. I have three rows of X's with three in each row. So I need a number sentence that matches my array. So three times three. We are not gonna do three plus three plus three because when I'm writing a number sentence that matches an array, it needs to be a multiplication problem. So three times three equals nine. That's the number sentence that matches my array. What do you notice about the two factors? The numbers being multiplied in the number sentence 3 times 3 equals 9. Did you notice that they are both 3? Today we're going to create and explore arrays that have equal factors. And what I mean by that is both factors are exactly the same number. So you're going to need a couple things. Your math journal, page 86 as well as a piece of graph paper that I sent in your work folder. Get those items out and come back. 
So first, let's take a look at page 86. <coughs> this array and number model are what you just did on your whiteboard, okay? And we notice that the factors, the numbers that are being multiplied together, are the same. They're the same digits. So what you're going to need are your centimeter cubes, which you have in your toolbox kit. I should have told you to get those out, but go get those. You can pause the video to get it. Um, it says the centimeter grid paper. That's the graph paper that I sent. And it says some tape. We'll see if you need that or not. You probably won't. So what you're going to do is this. You're going to choose a number 1 through 10. Use centimeter cubes to build an array with that number of rows and that same number of columns. Well, here's what I think is not going to be able to happen. I know for a fact that you don't have enough centimeter cubes to do some of those problems that you might be thinking. So, for example, if you choose 10 and 10, which you could, you're not going to have enough centimeter cubes to make an array on your paper. So you can just do it with X's. So you don't need to get your centimeter cubes out. If they don't work out, if it doesn't work out um, with those, that's okay. Because we can just use X's. So basically what you're going to do is you are going to pick two numbers. I'm going to pick, oh, I'm going to pick three. My pen doesn't want to work. I'm going to pick three and five. So I'm going to make an array for that. Now I apologize for my writing my pen just quick, so I'm quit, so I'm just going to use the mouse. So one two, three, and then five in each row. Oops, not the neatest, I'm sorry. And then write a number model, three times five, count those up, equals 15. Now how do I know my number model makes sense because I have three rows and I have five in each row. Now I want you to pick two of the same numbers. So for example, uh, I'll keep mine simple. I'm going to go two times two. So make my array one, two, and two in each row. What do I notice? I have the same number of X's in each row, and my number sentence matches my array because I have two rows and two in each row. I'm going to try it again. I chose to do another one with four times four. How do I know my number model fits my array? Because I have four rows and four in each row. Now, what do you notice about these arrays? Well, if I were to trace my arrays the outside each one of these would be in the shape of a square where all the sides are exactly the same so this is two 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 and two this one is four 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 and four and we call those square numbers anytime i'm multiplying when the factors are the same, we call those square numbers. And that's something that we will be working on over the next couple of days. So um, what I want you to do, you can go ahead and make some more with square numbers using five times five, six times six, seven times seven, and then math journal page 87 for some continued practice. Good luck.